Hey everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor. It's common-motor.com on the internet. And today we're gonna to show you how to set ignition points and ignition timing on the four cylinder Hondas that were built from the late 60s through the late 70s. So stay tuned. There are two important elements involving the ignition or setting up the ignition on a vintage Honda four cylinder. One is gonna be the points gap. The other one's gonna be the ignition timing, which is when does the spark plug fire? Now this information is relevant to the Hondas built from the late 60s to the late 70s. We're talking about 750s, CB 750s, CB 500Ks, CB 350F, CB 400F. And of course, on this bike, we're gonna do it CB 550. They all use very similar ignition systems and they're all set up and adjusted the same way. Now, if you haven't done this already, check out our video where we actually do some points preparation and advanced mechanism preparation. Um, we'll have a link here in the corner and a link below in the description, so make sure you check those out. And finally, this is an important skill to get down because this adjustment has to be done every 1,500 miles as part of a standard tune-up process. So pay attention. Once you master this, you're going to be golden for keeping your bike running like a top for years to come. In order to get started, we're going to remove a few pieces to make it easier to do the adjustment and also to show you some details that you need to pay attention to. First, we're going to pull the spark plugs out of the engine so it's easier to turn the engine over during this process and we're not fighting against the compression. We're going to remove the cover to the points, which is on the left side of the engine at the crankshaft. We're also going to remove the points plate to show you some details on the plate. And also behind the points plate is the advanced mechanism. And we wanna show you a couple of details on the advanced mechanism, which you have to pay attention to in order to get the timing correct. So we're gonna set the gap on the number one four point first. And the place to set the gap is the highest spot on the trigger cam. And to find that spot, I'm gonna approach my, my fire mark here, the one four. I'm just gonna go past it. It's about right there. I'm gonna go past it about 90 degrees. And what you're gonna see happen, the little window there is we have a tang that lines up center about right there. Now I'll set the gap. I'm going to use a 12 thousandths feeler gauge to set it initially. I'm going to loosen the, the point mounting bolt. And then I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver between these two little tick marks here. What this does is allow me to open and close the point to set the gap. So I can, I can control this with my finger here. Uh, you can also do it with a screwdriver if you want there. But I'm just gonna do it with my finger because I can. And I'm pushing against the point spring. Not a problem. I'm gonna come in with my feather gauge. I'm gonna pinch it between the points there. I'm gonna snug this down just a little bit. I'm gonna test my gap. That's a little bit too loose. See how there's no, I can pull that gauge out there really easy. I can wiggle it. So I'm not quite there yet. I'll loosen it up. Kind of pinching it snug and gently move it through that to a different down like that. I'm going to gently snug it up. Let's see where we are. That feels a little bit better. A little bit a little bit snug but I think I might go with it we're gonna be doing the same exact process over on the right side for the two three cylinders same thing here's my 
my fire mark for my 2-3. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees from here to line up the tang about right there. Mm -hmm. good? Yep. All right. Same exercise. I'm going to come in here. And that is way too loose. You can see how. It's too loose. My camera. So be gentle when you tighten the points mounting bolt because you can cause the point to move and change the gap value. So it's a very gentle tightening. That feels pretty good. I'm removing the headlight on this 550 because it's a 1977 model and it doesn't have a headlight on off switch. So that means that the key's on, the headlight's on. So I don't want to drain the battery with the headlight being on and the key on as I'm adjusting the point. So I'm unplugging it, but if you have an on and off switch on your bike, just keep the headlight off. Okay, so we're gonna now set the ignition timing. This is when the spark plug fires on the, uh, the one four point. And I'm gonna use my test light and we're gonna use this, uh, this is kind of the technique the Honda outlines in the manual. This is called static timing. And I'm gonna get the alligator clip just ever so perfect on that bolt. I need to do it there because that is a 12 volt positive bolt. I can take my test light, stick it here in the housing so it'll uh, it'll illuminate once the point makes contact. All right, so I'm getting ready to test it. Power's on. I'm gonna turn on power to my coils. Don't wanna leave them on too long. And I'm gonna slowly rotate the engine. I'm gonna see when does that light kick on. Right there. And we're a little bit off. We're a little bit, um, we'd say retarded. We need to advance the, the, uh, the points a little bit or advance the timing a little bit. And we're gonna do that by moving the plate. I'm on the mark, I'm rotating the plate really gently. And I'm gonna stop. I'm just kind of getting it where it just kind of toggles on. Try to hold it there. So I've got my bolts and I'll rotate the engine over and I'll check it. All right, so let's approach it slowly and bingo, there we are. F mark lines up and light is on at the same time. That means this side is in perfect time. So let's go ahead and shift over to the other side and do the two, three. Um, so in order to adjust the timing on the, the two, three point, um, I'm actually gonna loosen up the sub plate here which is uh, what moves to adjust the points. And you, I can actually loosen it up and I can kind of kick it around a little bit. Uh, you can even use a screwdriver right here to change this position. So uh, that's, that's how we're gonna actually set the timing on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the engine into position where I get the F mark aligned up with my index mark right there. Perfect. All right. Test light, being very careful because this uh, clip is, gets very close to that bolt, that's ground and that's 12 volt positive. So actually I'm gonna go grab this right here on the uh, connection for the condenser. Put my test light in place. I'm gonna kick on the power to the coils from the kill switch. And I'm ever so gently going to move this plate here. See if we can find a spot where the light kicks on. Almost. Really close right there. Let's see what happens when I do this real quick. Yeah, it's like, it's like right there. Here's an interesting phenomenon. See how the light's just barely on? It means it's about to fire. Uh, in this scenario, what I might do is go back and reset the point gap a hair wider. So we get that the trigger a little bit quicker. I'm gonna jump this up to a 15, a 12 here. I'm just gonna get that in there. We had before. Just kind of gently snug it up. Find that spot where it's grabbing. 
snug it up and not cause it to move too much. Line up there. Cool with that. Go ahead and loosen up the this so we can move the plate around. Double check we can move that. Yeah, it seems to be moving. Cool. Go and hook up my test light. Real gentle, only on the positive connection there. Go ahead and power on the bike and power to the coils. I want to keep the power off on the bike when I'm doing this stuff because I don't want to cook the coils. Because if you have the power on and the points are closed, you're going to run power to the coils and you will cook the coils and you'll be like, how do I melt my coils? So it just needs to be very, very sporadic when you, when you uh, actually turn the power on to do this. Otherwise, keep the power off. All right, look at that. We're getting some contact there already, which is a good sign. Let me just move this. Seems I want to go that way. Yep. Let's find that spot where it just turns off. Seems to be about right there at the end of its travel. Right there, it just kicked on. So let's go with that. I'm going to gently snug up these bolts. call that good for there. All right, we're gonna do a test to make sure that our, our timing mark was there. We kind of moved the test light out of the, the scene so I can turn the uh, uh, the wrench easier and again, be mindful of the position of your alligator clip here. Make sure it's not gonna to touch anything as you're rotating the engine and make sure the wrench doesn't touch any of these areas because that is positive and it will cause a spark between the wrench and uh, the plate there. So I'm gonna go ahead and go power on ever so slowly going to rotate the engine and watch to see if our timing mark lines up. Right there. So we're good. Our CB550's point gap and ignition timing is now set. Now it, the timing we did is what's called a static process, which means it's pretty close and the bike's usually gonna run just fine. If you've been meticulous about making sure those F marks line up dead on the money and the light kicks on right at the moment they line up, you're gonna be pretty good. However, there is another layer of timing we get to do to the bike and it's called a dynamic timing. And it's done with this outer space laser gun. No. Um, Uh, this is actually a, a timing light. This is called a timing strobe light. Uh, a lot of car guys use this. We're gonna roll the bike outside, fire it up, and then we're gonna adjust the timing dynamically. This is when the engine is running because we will get some variance between our static timing settings and the dynamic timing while it's running. And we're gonna tweak it ever so slightly while it's running. And this is the tool we need for that. So we got the bike fired up, warmed up to regular operating temperature. And we have it idling about 1200 RPM. And I have my, uh, my, my timing light hooked up. Look up for the battery. Right now I'm looking, um, I have hooked up to the number two, three cylinder sink. And I'm looking in that little hole there. Now to adjust the timing dynamically, the one, four, I loosen the plate, one, two, three bolts. And I rotate the plate back and forth. To adjust the two, three, I loosen the sub plate here with these two bolts moving back and forth. Got to figure out where it is though. So let's do the one four first. Let's see where we are. Hooked up on that spark plug wire there. Bike sounds good already. Like so, we're probably pretty damn close. Timing light. You guys can see that flashing. I'm going to be shining in the hole here, and I'm looking for the alignment. Is my F mark lined up with my index mark? All right, we're a little bit off right here. So what I'm going to do is I'll loosen the plate up and uh, we'll make the adjustment. I'm going to shift it to the left or to the right and see which way we need to go. That's that's the way we need to go. Okay. Now my F mark is lined up with my index mark for solder 1-4. I'm going to lock the plate down and I'm going to call it good there. I'm going to switch to the 2-3. Shine my light. Check it. See where we are. And actually, 
our Q3 is on the money. Like, I don't even need to adjust it. It's that good. So, we'll, uh, we'll keep it right there and uh, not mess with it. Call it quits. But you can see where the dynamic timing gives you a little bit more accurate picture of what's going on with the engine. And there you have it. We have successfully set the point gap, the ignition timing statically and dynamically on this CB550. The same process is gonna to apply to CB750s, 400S, 350S, 500Ks. Any of the four cylinder bikes from the 70s, late 60s are gonna apply the same exact way. I want you to keep in mind that this adjustment has to be done every 1500 miles, which is part of the normal tune-up interval of these bikes. Additionally, it really is kind of the, I call it the weed out skill to master. If you can master ignition timing, then yes, you can successfully own one of these vintage bikes. If it's something you're having trouble with, it's probably not a bike for you because it's part of just the regular service of the bike. So practice, follow our video, get it under your thumb and you'll be a master of ignition timing uh, after a few attempts. It, you really will get it down. It's tedious, but not difficult. Han shot first, man. This is Brendan here with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website. And of course, right down below, subscribe to this YouTube channel and we'll see you next time. I just broke the test light. Man. It's my favorite test light. <laughs>